Hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This time the topic is one suggested by one of the members. It's actually Hollow Man that wanted me to do something around uh, reassemblers. So when you code on the C64, back in the old days you typed stuff directly into the machine code monitor. So that sort of assembly directly into binary code. Uh, but if you read stuff using the machine code monitors, it's disassembly. That's not reassembly, it's disassembly. That's presenting the binary content of memory as, as uh, in readable format, uh, so as it is. Uh, when you do assembly, you type stuff in, uh, in a text file and then you run it via an assembler uh, and then that turns into the binary format. And reassembly is reversing the process of having the stuff from the binary file into some sort of editable uh, source code again. So it's bringing it back to assembly source code, uh, including adding all the relevant labels as well. So um, and it's doing its best because when you are assembling uh, or running an assembly through memory. All the labels are gone, uh, there is nothing of that left, uh, no artifacts or anything you can read at all. So if you call the address C1000 uh, uh, dpacker, that, that line of, uh, of description inside your source code is totally gone. So that needs to be recreated. So that is the process we're going to have a look at today. Uh, I'm using three disassemblers at the moment. One is Regenerator. It's by Tomasz or Tomcat of Nostalgia. Uh, that's the one we're going to use today. And then we have 6502 Bench and then it's uh, JC64. C64. Yeah, so these are the three ones I'm sort of beta testing and uh, sending my feedback back to the developers. 6502 Bench is in active development and so is JC10, JC, sorry JC64, uh, whereas Regenerator is sort of dead end. I've asked Thomas a few things and he's just not interested in developing it anymore and I've asked him to publish the source for somebody to take the button on and, and um, provide improvements to it, but that's also not something he has done. So. Uh, but it's still sort of my weapon of choice. It's actually the most limited of them as well, but it's the one I'm used to and that's why I tend to revert to that. So I will possibly have episode on the two other ones, but for now we are going to go and have a look at Regenerator and do a, a reassembly. So let's have a look. Okay, so here we are again. So um, we are selecting a file. This is sort of a random file. I've been fiddling a bit with the game uh, that's recently released. Excess already beat us to it. So uh, yeah, I'm just doing a, a reassembly for Fairlight TV rather than uh, beating them on CSDB. We're not very much into the speed cracking thing. We're doing the quality stuff. It needs to take time to be really good. So let's show a bit of the tricks on how to do it good. So this is a uh, regenerator, the reassembler. Uh, what you see here is that it's parsing everything into code. And uh, let's just scan through this and you can see it scans everything to code. Uh, and that is one of the differences between this uh, and uh, the others, because they are sort of assuming that everything is data and you need to tell what is something else than data as well. So here we can set uh, U for user label and we do start. That's a good start. Uh, yeah, one of the quick key presses here would be G for go. Uh, and what you see here is suddenly you run into a segment where it will jump to the 09AF, which is a jump, jump to subroutine, a 20 here. But that one is, uh, is not there um, because it's parsed at, as instruction. So break suddenly has two. So what we can do is we will scroll up and see if we have something before. 
and and I already know that this is data. I have had a bit of a uh, a look at this before, so I know a bit of what's uh, what's data and what's not. So uh, we do that, and I just press D. And as you see here, since it handles this as two bytes, this is it's handling this as. Um, as a break instruction basically and but I, what i can do is if i stand there on this subsequent address to the block previous and i press d then that is added to the previous block so suddenly all this is fine and uh, and now this is what started and i if i want to tidy stuff up i can add a line a blank line here and I would also like to add a line comment this is where my code starts all right and it's doing a bit of thing here it copies this block uh, to 02a7 so we can do it like this uh, this goes to 02a7 and what you see here is that this is probably a load routine of some sorts uh, yeah because this is uh, and what it does for you it's doing parsing of a few of the kernel addresses so you see here that ffba is setting the logical file name and uh, an fft5 is load so this is a basic standard kernel load here is uh, a file name uh, one byte long one byte long file name um, but and then you would like to set this to 0340 but that's a function that's not really there it, it can sometimes parse this itself but if it can't you can't force it to do it this uh, this is not doing that um yeah so we can't do that um let's see what else we can do here um dun, dun, dun. it's setting it's doing that it's doing that okay so that was um okay so and uh, right click here user label sets this to something parameter label sets this to something so we let's do parameter okay do the load and then we can do j uh, g for this and you see here it has set that to something it so now this is do the load the format this works with internally is um is turbo assembler um so if you're familiar with the turbo assembler this is what it will look like uh, personally as you know from watching previous episodes you would see that i would be using um, kick assembler and the format is not that but the way i use this is primarily to document what the game is doing um, if i'm going to merge in stuff i might want to know more detailed i want to have more detailed knowledge of what the game is doing and where it's doing and i want to cleanse stuff out so i want to kind of find out what i can clean and what i cannot clean and this is a handy way for for me to document it because if i just sit and and have a look in the machine code monitor writing on a piece of paper as i did before eventually i will just run into loops and and find the same things again and again and again and i don't remember between sessions this is a very good way of kind of remembering between sessions so here i can save the the turbo assembler file this is saving the configuration uh, yeah again a few quirks uh, i mean if I, here if i set here i will do control s which is save in any normal program but no no this is inserting a, a command or, or a comment a line comment so this is a line comment those on the right and then um, sorry side comment line comment it doesn't have its shortcut but that is what i used before when you have a full line you can't add more than one line uh, you can write as basically as long as you like i think but 
6502 bench would have an option of, of doing multiple lines. You can even do uh, nice blocks included with, it creates a block with, with asterisks and stars around it. So that's, that's nice, but this is more crude. And so this is what it's doing, but we should have a look again. So, um, didn't I do, oh no, I didn't rename it. Uh, user label goes to O2 A7 goes, I would do like that because I think that's how it should look. This is also, and I also know, um, running this in an emulator, I know that this goes to O300, no, uh, yeah. Let's let's not. But this is data that will go. This is data that will go somewhere else. Um, let's see here. Ah, sorry. O three forty one. Yeah, it's storing a number of things. I don't know what that is. And then it's doing a jump to that. It loaded something, and then it's storing stuff again, and then it's doing an RTS. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can add this goes to goes to O three forty. We can add a line comment to that. This goes. Over 340. Uh, then it's doing that. That's I'm, adding a blank line is a very nice way of sort of segmenting the code. So you you have like logical blocks. That's how I would do it in my source. So that's how I do it here. And then here uh, it's setting the color. Uh, from both the foreground and background, and then it's copying stuff to the to the screen. Um, okay, and then it's okay. Now I know. So the load is doing a load, and then it's doing a bit of a, a copy, and then that portion also sort of updates the parameters. So I'm pretty sure the O2A7 is doing a subsequent load. Uh, but what you see here is that it copied something to the screen. So this is the screen and this is to the color memory. And <laughs> yeah, there are many ways to do this copying. And if you want to optimize, this is not the fastest way of doing it. But uh, I mean, I'm sure that uh, there are not too interested in gaining a few cycles here. But uh, so it's rather... The screen is not 400 hex 400 bytes big. It's actually 03 E8 bytes. And if you divide that into four blocks, every block is FA bytes. So it's it's four equally big uh, blocks. Uh, so you can do a, a compare with FA and then um, and then you do the copy like this. But what you can also do is. Uh, do 0400, 0500, 0600, and then you do 066E8, and then you do uh, an overlapping copy. But then you don't need the compare on every lap, so that that is actually faster. Uh, I would, I haven't counted, but uh, that in that detail. But uh, yeah, so there are ways to do this. So this let's do uh, copy screen. Uh, yeah, load, load. What else do we want to know? To do this goes to 0340, so we know that. How big was the portion that went to 0340? Perhaps we should find that out as well. This, so it's hex 31 bytes. Um, oh, yeah. Well, it's actually 30 then, but because it was it was comparing with 31 after it's incremented. So it was 30 
the last lap and then it increased and then it did the compare and it didn't trigger again so hex 30 so we can do that as data so uh, and then i missed a byte and it's just pressing the d here again uh, yeah so this is sort of cleaned up i i could uh, because this is deep hacking again so this is something else inside here or isn't it? Uh, let's see what that is. Um, is that code or not? It is code, isn't it? Or where is that going? Ah, there is a call of that. Oh, yeah, F3 would be the logical thing to press for next, but here it's N for next. So these are the two things there. Mm, yeah, I possibly should dig more into that. Uh, where is that going? It's copying something from 0912, adding with 0946. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I should possibly have dug through this a bit more before exposing this to you. Uh, I just found a few of the basic things, but uh, so let's let's not focus on on perfecting the disassembly here. Uh, just save it again, and that's annoying. It's already there. Why isn't there a setting so I can overwrite without that thing? Uh, what should I know? So side comment. That's S. Line comment is, uh, well, you don't have a shortcut for that, but that's here, or uh, you do it from the, the, the menu here, the, the right click menu. So, and you or label is the user label, and this is the parameter label. So, again, these are the uh, basically this uh, line uh, user label and parameter and then line comments and side comments there is no button for inserting a black blank line so it's also parsing illegal opcodes there are no illegal opcodes so i'm skipping that uh, and well also then don't comment on that use labels we want that we want that tabs you can set the tab size Jump to if you want to jump to an address. Uh, one of the, and uh, what I've also shown you was to set data is, uh, is selecting an area and pressing D. Uh, setting text, selecting a, an area and pressing T. Setting a word. Uh, so that would be, uh, let's do it like here. Uh, no, I can't do that. So, <laughs> again, getting back to what's annoying here, that what you can what you can define is only the part that is code. Once you've set it to data, you need to revert it back to code before you can set it to something else. So, if you have this big block here of data and you just realize, oh no, I this one is actually something else. It's a piece of text. You can't do that. Uh, you need to you need to set it all back to code, and uh, and then modify isolating that little piece in between. You can't reselect parts of an already defined segments uh, segment. Quite annoying. Uh, what you should be aware of is the difference between a word and a lookup here. Uh, a word is just setting a, a word, so sixteen bits. Setting a lookup is also setting six bits, 16 bits, but you're setting it to a reference. So you're also adding a label to that destination. So if, if I have something here inside that would reference something, um, let's say something is referencing 09AB, I can hard code it using Word. So it references address 09AB or I can set a lookup so it points to 098B, but it's using a label to point to that particular place. Remove is there, merge is there. Uh, this is the range 
uh, that we're working with. If I if the end of the file is garbage or even the beginning of the file is garbage, I can I can say that the end of the file is garbage or the beginning of the file is garbage by limiting the scope inside here. But it's not like I can select a segment and say skip this. This is just trash. We don't want any disassembly of that. Don't reference this. To, there is not, no such thing. You can just trim it in the beginning and the end. Offset. So if you're disassembling something which is in one part of memory, uh, but it's actually supposed to be executed in some other part of the memory, and you do have something like this here. So this part is, uh, is here on OA12. But that is supposed to go to O2A7 uh, before uh, it's executed. So um, if this segment would be the only thing I reassembled and it would be placed on OA12, I can use the offset function to, to implement an offset for that particular part. But what I cannot do is sort of set something here and do an offset of that. I can, an offset is the entire source, I guess, right? I, I have done this a number of times, so it, no, I can't do this. So if I do offset here, let's see what happens. Okay, so you see the entire thing turns to offset thousand. I cannot select a segment and make that into uh, into uh, something with an offset, which is typically how the offset function works. You have your code, there is a piece of drive code, or there is a piece of code that would run like on the stack or on the lower part of the memory as we have here. I would need to be able to isolate that and set an offset for that particular block, but that is not available. I haven't noticed before now that I'm actually kind of overlapping part of the menu, so I should do... Um, oh. Right, can I move myself? <laughs> Sorry, that should be fixed before. There is plenty of space down here, so now I'm here. All right, um, edit blocks. Uh, so when the GUI here doesn't do what you want, uh, one thing you can do is edit, you can go in here and edit it manually. Both edit blocks and so I tend to be able to use edit block for trimming the blocks and then setting them and resetting them here. Uh, that's I'm not saying it's a handy way of doing it, but it's sort of getting behind how, how it works and ensuring that it will play according to your rules rather than the limitation of the GUI. Sent font, you don't really need that. Uh, labels, here you have the labels you've set and uh, you can, you can set the prefix that the different uh, automatically assigned labels have. So an absolute, a jump, a branch, a field, a pointer, a jump to subroutine, or an external. Uh, yeah, so let's see if we can have... Uh, one, one of the things I can also help you with is this. So if you display all the labels, uh, you're now seeing more like what the the typical turbo assembler would look like. Uh, you see all the definitions here. Um, you see the external calls, um, but then you also see stuff like this, E2020. Mm, we know that's not that, right? Because 2020, that's probably something that would go to the screen. Oh yeah, we can do this. Um, G for this. And, uh, and G for this. We know that this goes to the screen. Uh, goes to screen. To screen. Hmm. So to screen there. I should go to this one to ensure that that goes to column memory. Uh, to call mem. Call mem. OK. 
Okay, so let's make it blank there. And I have to se select that one. Dun, 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 dun. To screen, and then we add that as data. So this goes to the screen. It gets more compact like this. And color memory. Shouldn't be all of it, right? There is, oh yeah, it is all of it. Data. And then you need to fix it because of the, again, another GUI issue. There you go. Uh, and if we display labels, we should have fewer labels now because we don't have the the garbage label that is always in garbage data or when you try to parse uh, kind of garbage or graphics as something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is that. I think that was sort of it. This is what you do with um, with Regenerator and this is sort of how you could work uh, with the reassembler. Okay, let's let's show you one of the other quirks here. Test me. So I just coded a little bit of things. It's it's just um, yeah. I could possibly also show you the source code. It's it's mighty impressive source code. This is what it is. Jump to four C four C and then fill fifty number of zeros. So that's this. <laughs> Hope you are impressed with my coding skills. Uh, I select everything and then I press data and uh, no, of course it didn't select that last piece. I need to do it like that. Okay, so now I have defined this and let's see what the blocks says. So here it's data from 1003 to 1035. All of this is data, but there is no block definition for the code here because as we have said, the default of this disassembler is code. Uh, it doesn't define code uh, as a block definition. It only defines the exceptions to code. That would be data and word and all of that. Okay, so what happens here now is what you see is 4C, 4C, 4C. So if I set this as data, it will start trying to parse from one uh, address 1001 as code and then you would see that this instruction will stretch into address include also address 1003 which is defined as a block so let's see what happens if i press d now you see it takes that byte and does a, a data of it as i wanted it to do and then it uh, it uses uh, the, the following as code, that is still the default code, but that instruction ends, uh, it also uses 1003. So this instruction nicks the first byte of the block here. Uh, so if we again look at my block, this block suddenly starts at 1000 or 1004, the one that started at 1003. This is super annoying. The other annoying part is I can't say uh, set this to code because then it will set all of it to code. You cannot kind of separate the block, break it into two uh, because the blocks are blocks. You need to manually do that in the edit blocks or you need to do it manually by turning it back to code and then rebuilding the stuff again. So now you know a few of the quirks of uh, Regenerator. Possibly you can still have use all the fantastic merits it has. Now that you know a few of the, the restrictions, so you don't walk into those, to the minefield of, of trying to uh, regenerate uh, what it cannot do. So, that was the Regenerator by Tomcat of Nostalgia. Very nice program, again, with a few quirks, with a few shortcomings, but still a super nice tool by a very cool guy. If you don't like it, you would always have 6502 Bench and JC64 to play with. Uh, 
and we will have reasons to return to those in a future episode. But thanks for joining Fairlight TV and let's hope we meet next week. And while you are at it, while you've watched all the Fairlight TV episodes and you don't know what to do until next week, check out redbubble.com where there are Fairlight Mercs. You can order the Fairlight TV shirt. Down there, you can also comment, uh, requesting stuff for future episodes. Um, that's also where you do the like, the subscribe, and uh, yeah, well, and you can press that little clock button. So please do that. Uh, until next time. Bye bye.